you know uh, this this restorative justice program is here to determine the guilt or innocence of Dar and whether or not um, any punishment or um, community service would be required at the end of it so why don't we just start by clearly stating the case where Darlene um, used a certificate of exemption card which was not matched to her registration information. So the first thing of circle sentencing is we'd like to establish what her character is. So why don't we start with you? Well, uh, just let me tell you this story. I walked outside my camp one morning, I saw some legs with some boots sticking out from underneath my deck. I raced into town, I brought my son and the police, and well after the police kicked the legs uh, and the boots fell off, I think this could only be one person. She denies it, but I think it was her. And then there was this other time, I phoned Scott's camp and I was told I had the wrong number, but I got Iris Smith. Iris Smith, I was sure I had the right number, so a little later again I tried and tried, I apologized and hung up. Checked the number and tried it again. Again, Iris Smith. I went to a church supper that night. And I got a call that the police wanted to talk to me because Iris Smith complained that I was harassing her. Again, I'm not sure it was her, but I'm willing to bet. I'm willing to bet too, but we can't use that against her because we don't really know if it was her or not. Dar is always accusing me of brown nosing at work. I woke one morning and I looked in the mirror and sure enough my nose was all brown. It took me weeks to get that self tanning lotion off. And then remember the other time I went on vacation and when I came home uh, there was complaints that people had seen a uh, someone waving out of the window at my front of my house and I was in my bra and underwear. I don't know how she got that mannequin. I just arrived in a big city, and I was a little bit self-conscious and wanting to make a big impression on the big city folks. Uh, my cousin was having a dinner party and uh, wanted to look somewhat sophisticated, but uh, as we sat down for dinner, a uh, whoopee cushion exploded <laughs> underneath me, and I was mortified. At the next public event, um, I was trying to make a good impression again, and as I was engaged in some intellectual conversation, I, I went to light a cigarette, and it exploded in my face. Again, it scarred me for life. Do you remember the time we came back from vacation? Oh, I knew something was up when that bogus for sale sign was on the lawn. We walked in, and the whole place was a complete mess. Our bedroom was in the basement, our kitchen was in the living room, the living room was in the bedroom. It was, it was just unbelievable. <laughs> what a mess. Ah, of course, no one was around to clean up, unless you count the dummies that they had made of us. And, and I, I can't believe that you let her dye your hair after this happening. Just a couple of months ago, uh, you let her dye your hair. I know. I was, I was just feeling a little nostalgic. I wanted to see what my beautiful red hair looked like again. I didn't think she would dye it bright pink, though, uh, to make it look like candy floss. Do you think she did that on purpose? You spend hours with me on the floor screwing down all of our furniture. <laughs> you should have known that. <laughs> You're right. Well, rumor had it, has it that I got her mad once, and I can't see how I could have gotten anybody mad, but even if I had, she obviously just blew it out of proportion because after coming home, I come in, and I have my shower, and I go to get a change of clothes, and there's nothing around. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. I couldn't find anything. Looked under the bed, in the closets, even went in the attic. Nothing. So here I am, wondering where my clothes are. So I decided to go for a stroll to get this 
uh, this off my mind. And what do I find? My underwear up the flagpole at the high school, at the school. What kind of impression is this woman trying to give the children of our community? <coughs> Dar, I think we've established that you are one hell of a mean practical joker. And, um, but it's not enough to really put you behind bars or you know, community service. If you were to have to clean the houses of everybody you've gotten, you would never have time to clean that big tent. I mean, you just wouldn't be seen again. But let's put it this way, Dar. You spent 30 years. I think I finally got you. You know, is that the jokes that got to me? I mean, there were many. And you set me up over and over and over again. It was the laughter. It's the laughter that threw me over the edge. But it's all been worth it because uh, God knows it's been funny. And uh, cause for a good laugh. And here it is, right back at you. Love you. Bye. Thank you.